let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. Few subjects generate more controversy and are addressed less frequently than that of Christian giving. Seldom does the church deal honestly or at all with this most important aspect of a believer's discipleship in Christ. Dr. Vincent Onyibuchi Wampa has sounded a clear and gracious voice in bringing this discussion to the table in his new book, The Joy of Faithful and Cheerful Giving. Clearly written and down to earth, this book deals with how things really are in the church regarding money, giving, and living a life that honors the Lord and participates in his kingdom's work. Dr. Wampa holds a Bachelor's of Theology degree, a BA in Bible, a Master of Arts degree, a Master of Arts in Bible Translation, and a PhD in Intercultural Studies. He's a missionary, a pastor, and teacher, elder and board member of the Long Beach Alliance Church in California. He preaches at the Long Beach Rescue Mission once every month, a retired educator with the Los Angeles Unified School District, currently substitute teach for the Linwood Unified School District. Dr. Wampa and his wife started a ministry called Eternal Word Communication Ministries in 1994. Their mission field is in Nigeria, where they have a Christian schools that run from pre-K to 12th grade. Their mission is to educate the children academically in light of the Word of God. He's also the author of Understanding Cultural Perspectives, God's Word and Missions, as well as ebook Made Simple for You. Dr. Vincent Wampa, author of The Joy of Faithful and Cheerful Giving, Wonderful Principles to Embrace, is our guest on This Week in America. Dr. Wampa, welcome to the program, sir. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. This is such an important topic, and you wrote this motivational book, The Joy of Faithful and Cheerful Giving, Wonderful Principles to Embrace. Why did you decide to write this book? What was the decision in writing this? I chose to write this book in order to educate everybody on how to give faithfully, wonderfully, cheerfully, in the light of the Word of God, and also how to be good stewards of what God has given to each and every one of us. Boy, so both very important aspects. In the title, I love the title. Talk about how you came up with the title of the book, The Joy of Faithful and Cheerful Giving. I I chose this title because uh, as the Word of God instructs us, we are to give joyfully, faithfully. We are to give bountifully, not sparingly, not uh, out of uh, um, uh, compulsion, but we are to do it uh, voluntarily because we received vol- uh, voluntarily from God. He gave us and we are to give back to him what he has given to us. The book I mentioned is very clearly written. The book is available at Amazon, the usual places. Uh, Dr. Wampa's website is VinceVentures.com. I'll give you that throughout the uh, conversation, and it's available on our website, ThisWeekInAmerica.us. Our guest is Dr. Vincent Onyibucha Wampa, and I'll spell all of that as we're going through the program here. What is the purpose of writing this book? What was it that made you decide, you know, I really need to write this book and explain these very important principles you've got in your book? The purpose of writing this book is to teach or encourage people to give or share what God has given to them, no matter how large or small their possessions might be. The lesson we are to learn is that Jesus gave himself to redeem us from our sins so we can give our possessions to help others who are in need. We are also to give to God's work everywhere. We are to be cheerful givers because the Bible encourages us that each one must give just as he or she has proposed in his heart, not grudgingly, under compulsion, as I said before, but cheerfully. And the self-worth does not depend on the amount of money that we have or do not have. The rich or the poor have a common bond. The Lord is the maker of them, as Proverbs chapter 22, verse 2 tells us. 
money is not a guarantee or contentment to this principle one has to learn. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. And in every and uh, uh, in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both uh, in having abundance and in suffering. This is what Paul tells us in Philippians chapter four, verses eleven through thirteen. So that is the purpose of writing this book, that people will learn how to give proportionately based on what God has blessed them with. The title of the book is The Joy of Faithful and Cheerful Giving. Again, it's, uh, it's a title that says so much in what the attitude should be as we give. Who is the target audience for this book? My target audience is all people, whether Christian or non-Christian whether rich or, or poor. I want everybody to learn the principles of Christian giving so that if people know what it means to give, that will be very, very helpful to everybody because whatever anybody possesses, we are only stewards of what God has given to us. So therefore, we, everybody need to give, whether rich, or poor, whether Christian or non-Christian, or Muslim, Hindu, um, name it, they are all to give. Our guest on the program is Dr. Vincent Onyebuchi Wankpa, and I'll have all of this information so you can link on directly to his website, vinceventures.com, book available at Amazon, all of the usual places. What do you hope, Doctor, from your book people will embrace? What do you hope they, they take away, I embrace from the book, the joy of faithful and cheerful giving? Um, what I want people to embrace is all that the, the book teaches about giving. That giving should be, uh, uh, according to what the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, from chapter 8 and 9, that it should come from the heart. Everybody needs to give cheerfully and uh, uh, not sparingly because the amount you, you sow, that is what you're going to reap. If you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. If you sow sparingly, you're going to reap uh, sparingly. And they should learn a lesson from the Macedonian Christians. The Macedonian Christians, as we were told in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, they were poor, but out of their poverty, they were willing to give. And they, not only that they, they were willing to give, they gave themselves and then also gave to the church in Jerusalem. So everybody has to give, no matter how small, and they have to do it uh, uh, bountifully, sacrificially, uh, cheerfully, and, and uh, when we do all those, then we we'll expect God to bless us super abundantly because he promises to bless anybody that gives back or who remembers the poor or the needy all around the community. If we do that, or even churches or organizations that are in need, when we give to them, then God is going to give back to us. What are the principles of uh, being a Christian? And is giving only for Christians? And can a person who's not a Christian give gifts? Um, Christian giving is a grace, a gift of God, which is made possible through the enablement of the Holy Spirit. Christian giving is characterized by the following principles. Giving out of joy. Giving liberally given voluntarily, given out of one's ability, given generously, given oneself. So, and like I said before, given sacrificially. So there are lots of principles that we need to give. Uh, when everybody learns that those principles, that will help the community, that will help the church, that will help organizations. So we need to learn how to give. And it's not, it's not only Christians who are, are supposed to give. 
everybody is supposed to give, whether you are a Christian or not. You are supposed to give. You can give to uh, churches, you can give to organizations, you can give to mosques, you can give to whatever uh, organizations you want to give. But everybody is expected to give. So when everybody gives, according to how God has touched them, then the, the God is going to take the, 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 the glory. And then that person will take uh, the blessing that comes from giving. Because the Bible says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive. In your vast experience that I, I talked about in the, in the introduction to the program, what do you think really motivates Christian people to give? What is the, most, the, the motivation for most? Okay, people are motivated to people are motivated to give because of many reasons. The the proof of our accountability by the organization or the church, the stewardship that the, the, the churches show to them motivates them to give. And also the mission and vision of the organization or the church makes people to give. Also, the, when people trust an individual or a charity organization or a church, that also motivates people to give. And also, people want to see the impact of what they have given or what they are given. They see the impact they, 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 their gifts is making. So that makes them to give more and more. But when people don't see the impact of what they have given, then that will discourage them and they will not continue to support or give to the churches or the organizations. Furthermore, people want also to get their tax deduction. A lot of people want to get their tax deduction as a result of the gift that they have given. So it is important that uh, people know the reasons why they give and also what they expect from the organizations or churches or um, individuals they are helping. They really want to see that. And they want to feel good of themselves that they have helped one person or the other to meet their needs. And uh, they also want to receive encouragement from the people that they've given to or the church or the organization that they've given to. And uh, it also encourages children when they see their parents give uh, yes. and they will learn how to give too. You know, it's interesting. Are there right motives for giving? Are there wrong motives for giving? Talk about that, the, the separation, right or wrong. Are there right and wrong ways? Absolutely. We need to know that we are stewards of what God has blessed us with or given us uh, entrusted into our care. So it is good to, that we know that there are right, right motives of giving. When we give to lessen someone's hardship or put laughter in someone's mouth, we have the right motive. When we help to uh, meet the needs of the organization or the church or people around us, our neighborhood, when we give uh, to, to such uh, things, it's really something that will, uh, that is on the right track. Furthermore, when we imitate Christ, because Christ himself gave, starting from God, the maker of all things, the Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what the Bible tells us. And then he gave his son, Jesus Christ, who came also and gave himself as a ransom to redeem everybody from all our sins. So God showed us what it means to give. And then his son, Jesus, uh, emulated him. And we, as Christians, we also need to imitate Christ in giving. Are there wrong motives of giving? Yes, there are wrong motives. Some people want to show off. That is pride, makes people to try to give. And some also, uh, they believe that 
they are getting a favor from God or from man when they give. But it shouldn't be the, the, the motive we have to have that God must give us back or that somebody has to pay us back because we have given. Okay. And also to uh, that money uh, is the, 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 uh, the basic thing in life. That is not. So those are wrong motives that people have that, that makes when they are given not to be a right one. So we have to have the right motive of giving. And when we use that right motive of giving, that God will bless us in return because we have done it in the right way. But if our giving is based on the wrong motive of giving, so our, our reward will not be as expected as believers in Christ. The book we're talking about is The Joy of Faithful and Cheerful Giving, Wonderful Principles to Embrace. The guest and our author is Vincent, V-I-N-C-E-N-T, Onyebuchi, that's O-N-Y-E-B-U-C-H-I, Wampa, and that's N-W-A-N-K-P-A. Uh, and I'll give you the information uh, one more time in the program. It's on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And to go to uh, the doctor's website, vinceventures.com. Interesting uh, information there, not only on this book, but the other books that Dr. Wampa has written as well. What, doctor, do you think hinders Christians, people in general, from giving to God's work and, and charity? What holds so many people back, do you think? Um, number one thing that holds people back from giving is poverty. When they don't have, that makes them not to give. So, and then self is also, uh, when they're only concerned about themselves, so therefore they don't want to give. And also lack of trust makes people not to give. They, they are trusting that, they are saying, if I give now, I will not have anything more. But when they trust that God is able to pay them back or reward them, then they will get more reward from what they are given. And also, uh, in the churches or some organizations, granting more honor to the wealthy than the poor makes people not to give. They say, okay, my, my, uh, uh, give, my giftings or my giving is not recognized. It's only those of the poor. And then, um, I mean, those of the rich. So some other reasons for people uh, not to give is imposed giving, that in form of levy. Some churches, organizations, they impose levy, and that makes people not to give. And also in some churches, lack of budgeting makes people not to give. And uh, a bad accounting system in the organizations or in the churches also makes people not to give. Embezzlement, embezzlement, lack of scriptural teaching, fear, and lack of maturity. Those are some of the reasons also that make people not to give. If they have learned the right way of giving through the scriptures, that will make them to know that it's important to give. All of this information in is doc, in Dr. Wampa's book, The Joy of Faithful and Cheerful Giving. What can preachers do to motivate Christians, people in general, to start giving sacrificially, proportionally, generously, bountifully, and, and, and cheerfully? What, what can preachers do? Okay. Preachers should spend time to educate people on giving in their churches. Even nonprofit organization leaders should motivate people to give as well through ads that they make. And they also have to set example of giving. So if the preachers or the leaders of those organizations themselves, if they give, people that are uh, behind them will see that they give and it will encourage them to give as well. So if the leaders are not being taught well on giving, or if the leaders are not given and the people are seeing that they are given, it will discourage them. So it is the responsibility of the, the leaders, uh, the church leaders, organization leaders, to give so that people will see and it will motivate them to be given as well. 
You touched on this before, but it's such an important point. Why should we be good stewards? What is our role to be good stewards of what we have? Yeah. Uh, God does bless his children in the, many ways, just as he has promised in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, that if we give, he's going to bless us back, that our reward will be shaken together, pouring over, and that we will come back to us. So all, everybody that gives will be will sometimes expect that they will be receiving rewards from God. And then, like I said before, like, um, if you we sow sparingly, we're going to get sp sparing uh, reward. If we go um, sow bountifully, we are also going to receive bountiful reward. So everybody needs to be generous in their sowing and in their reaping, they will also get the same reward according to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Uh, so we need to sow bountifully and also receive bountifully. A couple minutes left in the program. Let's talk here for a second about God's rewards for being faithful and cheerful givers. Talk about that because there are rewards that we can reap, aren't there? Yes, there are rewards. Um, like uh, I also said before, those rewards are the things that God gives back to us or gives to the church or the organization or to individuals that has uh, given to, uh, what God has given to them. Those re rewards are numerous. Like uh, I said before, given cheerfully, then given bountifully, given uh, um, a blessing, like I said in Malachi 3.10, how the, the blessings will come back to us, shaken together. So God is going to give us back, according to Proverbs 19.17 and 2 Corinthians 9.6-15. Uh, there we have lots of rewards that uh, the Bible has promised to give to everyone who has given to, to the work of God. There are lots of them that we need to get back from him for having given unto him too. What kind of response are you getting? I mentioned in the beginning, it's something that some people are reluctant to talk about, to discuss. You've laid it out there, again, down-to-earth style. It's clearly written how things really are in the church regarding money and giving and a life that honors the Lord. What kind of response are you getting? I'm sure people are saying, thank you. You've brought some clarity to this. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of response because people are buying the book from me. I'm seeing a lot of people who are coming to me to buy the books I mean the book, and then um, their, their report also and in the review shows that people are, like what uh, they, they've read and therefore it's encouraging to them. So I'm really excited that the book is reaching uh, as many people as possible, even, the, even though the time uh, it was written or when it was released, it's still very short, but the response I'm getting so far is very, very encouraging. So I also would advise people to go and search for the book and also read it and buy it. So because it's really a, a book that will touch many lives. Those who have not been given before or who are discouraged about giving, that will encourage them that they need to start giving. It is very, very important that we give. Like I also said before, it, it's not how much that you have that matters is the heart which you are, you, you are given. So when you give with a joyful heart, a, a cheerful heart, with a um, sacrificial mind, trying to meet the individual needs, uh, personal needs or uh, church needs, organizational needs, then you, your heart will be satisfied that you have done what God has asked you to do. So you and I, we owe it a responsibility to go out and give as much as we can to God's work and to encourage the poor. We have the poor among us all the time. Okay, the needy among us, 
the homeless, name it. There are a lot of people in need. Therefore, everybody should give. Whether you are a Christian or non-Christian, whether Muslim or Hindu or whatever thing, uh, profession you are in, or a Satanist, whatever, it's important that you have to go and give because God uh, loves cheerful givers. You've done such a wonderful job in answering questions that we all have had. The name of the book is The Joy of Faithful and Cheerful Giving, Wonderful Principles to Embrace. The author is Dr. Vincent Onyebuchi, that's O-N-Y-E-B-U-C-H-I, Wankpa, and that's N-W-A-N-K-P-A. The book is available at his website, VinceVentures.com, along with his other books of Amazon, all of the usual places. Dr. Uh, Wanpa, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much for spending some time clarifying a lot of important issues for so many of us. Thank you for being with us on the program today. Thank you. I, I thought you said you're going to show something about the other books. Yeah, the books are up. Uh, the video is up on the, uh, the book covers are up. So do you want to mention those uh, briefly before we go? Yes. Tell us a little bit about the other books that you have. Okay, um, the other book I have is called Understanding Cultural Perspectives, God's Word and Missions, a powerful tool for theologizing. So th this book uh, says us about um, how to meet people according to their context. There are co co cultural contexts in different parts of the world, and people go to different parts of the world to preach the gospel and Sometimes the missionaries will uh, uh, preach according to their own culture, not bearing in mind the culture where they are in. So this book tries to let people know that you need to bear in mind the people you are going to witness to the culture of those people because they have their, their culture, their languages, their, their, their food, everything that they, they like. So when you are ministering to people, we have to do it according to context. If that is not done, people will regard Christianity in that culture as a foreign uh, religion. But when you speak their language, when you uh, live, eat their food, when you do things that the people do there, uh, and then don't ask them to change their names to, for, to be English names so that it will be easier for you, that you are not doing it culturally. So we have to communicate culturally to the people. Because a world which has many cultures and which needs to hear the gospel of salvation based on their own culture, a gospel which is unchangeable or watered down to fit into many cultures. Without all this, people will be receiving Christianity as a foreign uh, religion in those uh, cultures. So, and the purpose of this book is contextualization doing it according to the context of where the people are. We have to guard against imperialism uh, in, in the locality where we find ourselves. And also we to teach the people according to the Holy Spirit's uh, guidance in that culture. And also we have to be conscious of uh, uh, mission consciousness in, in those cultures. So when we do this, God's name will be glorified. That is for the uh, that this other book, and the other book is ebook made simple for you. Ebook is a short book for electronic book, and uses either a computer or mobile device or ebook reader to display long forms, uh, long uh, forms uh, in the in the book form. Ebook has m multiple digits our digital pages, and the paper, people can navigate through those uh, pages, and they use PDF format. So PDF format is a portable document format that is easy for people to uh, locate when they go to the, their computers or their iPhone. So it is very important that people will use their, uh, the ebook. And why is ebook uh, so accessible? Ebook is immediately accessible to the public, unlike a long form of printed media or a paperback or hardcover. 
you can put it in behind an opt-in or some kind, and then your website visitors can access those information from your uh, ebook. So you can distribute the file many times with no additional production cost after the initial creation of the ebook. There is no shipping charges for the distribution of the ebook. So ebooks are very, very important. So we can assess them as quickly as possible. So the title again is Ebook Made Simple for You. And both of those books are available at Dr. Wampa's website, VinceVentures.com. You can link on by going to our website, as well as the book we focused on today, The Joy of Faithful and Cheerful Giving, Wonderful Principles to Embrace. Dr. Wampa, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much, Rick. I really appreciate that. It has been our pleasure. God bless you, Rick. You as well, sir. Thank you very much. And all of this information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.